Okay, here we are on the Open Elms landing page. Um, we can log in via single sign-on, SSO, or manual login. So you have options. Um, we can do work with any type of single sign-on technology. You can uh, any user can have any number of roles, but um, we're going to start off the training because that's a good way to show um, the ease of use of the system uh, from the learner perspective. Okay, so here we are, we, we log in um, as a learner, we're, we're confronted with a um, help video, which it loads up to us uh, initially, but we're going to close that because we're here to tell you how to use the system. Okay, um, uh, on the landing page, um, if we scroll down, um, the thing about Open Elms is it's designed to be easy to use. As you can see, it's got a very similar look and feel to video on demand services such as Netflix or Amazon Prime. So we have our um, learning categories, uh, our latest releases, and we've got horizontal scrolling, so you can scroll down individual categories, or you can expand them and see the learning. If you want to access any of the learning within these categories, you can click on the learning and click on launch resource. And it's the same process um, whether you're accessing um, YouTube, e-learning, e um, any type of learning, it's the same process. Just press that blue button and it activates the learning for you. Okay. Um, within the learning, if we scroll down here, um, we have, as I say, we have the latest releases in progress. Uh, also, there's AI in the system that will recommend you um, learning um, when it compares the learning that you've done with that of your peers. Um, if we just go to the filter icons at the top of the screen, uh, what these do is these, these can allow you to filter the learning that's, um, that's in the system. So if we wanted to, for instance, just have a look at uh, learning that um, uh, had been completed, we could do that and we can just see the learning that's been completed in the system. Similarly, we can have a look at the learning that's in progress and learning that's not, not been started. And we've got other filters there too. So we could have got a filter for you to require you to, um, for precursor training to be done before you can access that training. And no matter what we're selecting on, we'll have um, uh, icons that appear. Um, so this one is available for enrollment. So there's learning here that you can enroll on as well as learning that's assigned to you. Uh, we've got refresher training, um, mandatory training, and nudged or favorited training. And we can sort the learning by um, A to Z, Z to A, the newest one, the oldest one first, etc. So we've got flexibility in how we can uh, visualize the, the, the learning that's available for us on our ePortfolio. Okay, so um, if we scroll to the top of the screen, um, we can see there's um, a, a plus button um, here. And what this allows us to do is allow us to add our own learning to the system. So we're not just restricted by um, uh, learning that we are that, that has been assigned to us. We've also got learning that we can create ourselves and add to the system. And we've also got um, a custom form. So you can create any type of form you can fill in and add that to your portfolio. So here we've got evidence of work, reflective logs, and blog entries, etc. Um, and if we just have a look at them, or something we've done before, let's have a look at an upload we've done before here. So we'll filter using the upload filter. Here we can see a certificate that's been signed off. And we've got the details of that certificate. Um, we've got the file and um, any sign off on that so has been done accordingly. Uh, similarly, we've got other ones here. This one, crime in the courts. Um, and it allows, what, it's, what that's doing is it wants us to edit the upload, sign it off as ready for submission. And once that's signed off, our manager gets notified of that sign off. And then he's then required, or he or she is required to sign that off as well. So there's a whole workflow system behind um, the e-learning as well. Just having a look at the filters uh, again, um, we've got various different options. So we can filter for, for instance, YouTube learning. Uh, if we have a look at that, let's go back to the learning and scroll down. Um, here we can see um, uh, we filter for YouTube. We can have a look at um, uh, YouTube uh, resources. Here we can launch the, the YouTube resource and, and play accordingly. So um, uh, it allows you to um, uh, have video content and it tracks that video content for you as well. If we search for all our learning resources under the title of the name health, here we can see anything that's associated with health. So this could be in the keywords, in the description, 
or in the title of the learning resource. Uh, we've got a bell going off there. What that bell is telling us is um, things that are due. So here we've got a certificate that we need to that we need to, to action um, or it's been completed. And we've just been told that uh, we've had feedback from the manager to say that's been completed. We can uh, launch a conversation with any of our fellow trainers, uh, trainees or trainers there. And you've got um, details of their Zoom team, Skype IDs and email addresses. Uh, here we have a, um, a help window, so if we click on that, um, it will take us to a help video which will give us a guided tour of how to use the system. So just to let you know, there is help throughout the system um, uh, that's available to you and it's interactive. So here it will tell you how to navigate the home page. If we go to the calendar, here we can see um, uh, courses that are available to us. So these ones in grey, those are courses that we need to sign on to. The ones in black are ones we've already signed on to. So um, uh, there, this one is waiting for approval. Uh, this one uh, is uh, online security training. Um, so if we click on this one, there's another one to enroll on. We can enroll on that. And here we've enrolled it successfully. And here we've taken it directly to the online security training. Uh, now that, that we've enrolled on that course, uh, we click on the learning resources and we can launch a Teams event for, for that uh, resource. If there are learning resources connected to the event, um, so here we've got a security conference which we've enrolled on, we can go to that and we can launch the module directly. And here we've got video conferencing, um, web resources that are available to us. So we're blending in the learning. So this is pre-learning. Uh, there's a, uh, a website to go to and any learning that will be shared with us can also be run during the, the event as well. We also have chat and a, and a Jamboard option as well available to you. Um, if we go to uh, assignments, this lists us all the learning available to us in a list view. So we've got different types of users of different types, types of needs. Um, so here we have a universal credit refresher course and we can enroll on that in the same way we enrolled on the other courses as you saw previously. And you see this one here is, is waiting approval. Finally, we've got uh, the progress option. And with the progress option, this tells us um, how we're doing on all our learning resources, what's attempted, what's not attempted. And we can uh, filter that information accordingly. Uh, we can see any events we've signed up to. There you can see the events we've signed up to. Uh, we've got a leaderboard. so. We can give ourselves points and see where we are in the comparative rating on CPD points. Uh, any badges we've earned will be listed there. Any skills required for our job, which we need to require, um, and those aren't checked, so we still need to get those. And any comments from, from our um, managers or trainers are input there. So that's in essence is the, the, the learner experience. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the role and go into it as a line manager. The thing about Open Elms is it has uh, role-based design. And what role-based design means is that rather than data-driven data design, each role is designed for the individual per individual using the system. So here um, with, the, with the manager, he's got three main tasks. Setting training, uh, signing off training, and approve and manage bookings. And here we've tailored the interface so that um, it's attuned to those main tasks. So all the learner has to do to, to learn how to use the system is to read from left to right as if they're reading a book um, and they could just carry out the tasks there. Um, so let's first of all start with setting training. Um, so here what we may want to do is add a new event. So if we click on add training session and we can um, uh, create a, a new a new training session we can give it um, a type um, so we'll say it's a, it's a, a learning module uh, we can select um, from um, our lessons pre-populated learning resources so once we've done this 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 let this event once we may want to pull off information we've used before and use it again we can give it a description uh, whatever we want to call it. And we can select a venue 
and we can select the date for it. And what we're doing here is we're setting up um, an event which we can then either assign to our users or we can make it enrollable. If you make it enrollable, then anyone can access that, 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 that um, uh, event and sign on to it. Because we've selected the venue, the maximum and minimum class sizes are by default of, are entered for us, but we can change those if we want to uh, and give a minimum class size as well. If we want to, we can also require management approval for, for the enrolments. Here we've got our learning pre-populated because we selected it, but we can add, add further learning if we wanted to and blend that in from our learning resources. So here we can select another bit of learning and that's added into um, uh, the event. We can see we haven't got any users, so it's just warning us that we haven't satisfied the minimum number of users yet. We can uh, do that by adding in uh, users, departments, groups, etc. And here we've added some users to the event and they're listed in here. Uh, what happens is when you um, select more than the maximum number of users, um, those are then uh, placed into the waiting list like so. So if we scroll down, you can see now they're on the waiting list. And you can move people around, you can move people off the waiting list and um, on and switch people around on the, on the system, like so. So now see Jake's now gone onto the waiting list. Um, and when people are moved off the waiting list, there's a queue and you can sort the queue and then people move on on, on and off the waiting list uh, in accordance with the queue. What we're going to do is we're going to add video conferencing. So we're going to make it into a, a Teams event. Um, and having done that, um, you can see we've got the Teams event there, and we can select how we want these to be to be, to be um, uh, carried out. So we can say that we may want the instructor to lead these first two, and the rest can be these two can be be for the, for pre-learning, and this one here could be an assignment to complete after the event. So we can give it a date when we want it to be completed, and that's how you set up an event. So now people can. Uh, this is one we've assigned people, but in a also we can also allow people to enroll on the event in the same way that you saw before. So we save and close. Um, that will then be processed using a cron task in five minutes and then added to everyone's calendars. Other options available to us. Um, if we uh, then go to um, view by program, here we can have... Um, learning programs in the system. So these can be um, uh, uh, apprenticeships or they can be qualifications. Any type of program can be accommodated by the system. And you can search filter by program and, and search according and, and sort the, the information accordingly. Here we can see things like um, uh, if we let's filter by brilliant storytelling. Here we can see um, time left behind, day since updated, percentage completed, um, duration completed, and on target completion time. So if it's red, it's something to worry about. If it's brown, then um, it's on target. Uh, if we have a look by user, here we can see the, the, the information um, for each user. Again, we can search for the user. So here, for instance, we can see um, such metrics as um, um, how many resources haven't been started, how many are in progress, how many are completed, days since we last contacted them. If we had a review with them, say day since reviews and days since they submitted work. Um, and the total time, percent, time spent and the percentage of resources they've completed. Um, so uh, if we want to drill down into, the, into those people, we can do that. We can select their name and we can drill down into that data and have a look at um, any learning programs they're on. We can see um, uh, things such as the percentage of each criteria completed, and we can even drill down into a sub criteria and see what's being completed and what hasn't. Um, we can have a look by um, resource co completion or time completion as well. So we've got those various metrics in which we can use to analyze um, the program uh, with respect to completion. If we're having a look at a, a, a program and decide that an element of that program isn't satisfactory, then what we can do is we can add learning. Um, so we can select from our learning library. So let's just say we'll give them a manual handling course. We can assign it to the journalism course. And we say it's all about good English on all, on all platforms. And we say we want it completed by that date. 
So we can add to and tailor the, the, the learning experience for each learner by adding learning. We can set project work for the learner um, or we can add evidence. So this is basically if the learner comes to us or we see evidence of the learner, we can enter that information in ourselves. So it's all about building up the information on the portfolio to show learning in the correct areas for that program. Um, other, other features in, in within this are similar to what you've seen in the program. So we've got the list of learning resources, all events, the leaderboard, badges, and any comments here. So if there's been any comments on that learner, um, they're all um, uh, collated there. And you can see any commonality and any issues that, that have come from that, um, that learner. Other features in the system. Um, so here we've got sign of training. So within this, we have any um, training that's been done that requires sign off. We can go onto this, uh, we can look at it, have a look at the, the, the uploads, and then just simply sign it off by clicking the sign off button. And once that's been saved and closed, uh, we'll see that uh, that is now no longer listed on that. So we can see the numbers now gone from 97 to 96. So we're reducing the amount of training we're doing. Um, similarly, approved and managed bookings. Here we've got the number of bookings that need a, your approval. Um, so this can be for learning resources where there may be a cost element or events that the user signed up to. So here we can see the universal credit refresher course we booked on earlier. As this person's manager, we can uh, approve it. And we can see now that that's no longer in the list. Uh, and again, that number has been reduced uh, accordingly. So that's the, the learner experience. Um, if we were to move on to the curriculum developer, which we will select here. The curriculum developer is, is in charge of the process of curating and creating learning for, for the learner. Um, so again, we have the user-centered design. So here are the main tasks for the curriculum developer. They add learning resources, add learning activities, schedule events, define programs, assign supervision, uh, and then they have other elements, just getting feedback on their learning and um, um, some setting up default, default learning um, elements. If we have a look at the learning library and the learning resources, um, here we can see this, this, this is basically a hierarchical structure. Um, the first element of learning, the simplest element of learning is learning resources. And these are things like blog entries, e-learning, um, Vimeo, YouTube, stuff like that. Um, next up is uh, learning activities or, or, or lessons, and these are used in, in events um, uh, to uh, quickly assign learning to, to, um, to individuals. So essentially what this is, is this is a, a collection of learning resources um, bundled together uh, within a certain order. So here we have day one, day two, day three, etc. These are all the learning resources bundled together for this course on or social work or this lesson on social work. And they can, that can take um, any number of, of, of days in order to complete that. Um, events are what we've seen before. So these are these are calendar events in the system. So there's all the events for our learners, and we can we can we can edit those for our, um, for learners in the system. And we have programs as well. And with the programs, we have uh, the ability to um, uh, create very sophisticated um, long-term uh, program elements. So here we have skills, knowledge, and behavior of a learning program listed for us. And within each criteria, we can assign learning resources to that criteria uh, and change the work window. So we can change the work window, we can add learning resources, uh, and whatever we're adding in there will then appear on these within these work windows. So here on day 15, um, this person will get um, this learning and on day 58 they'll get another warning to tell them that uh, they need to complete it. So that's the work window which they have to complete the learning. If we wanted to uh, change the, um, uh, the individual delivery dates of any of this, we can do that as well. So we have flexibility as to when this stuff starts and when stuff finishes. And the whole point of this is, is what we're doing is we're basically timing when learning appears on people's learning portfolio. So they are not swamped with information all at once. It's basically a matter of drip feeding it in accordance with, accordance with these programs. Uh, we can assign supervision here. So here we've got our, our managers and we can assign uh, learners to the employees to those people. 
Um, and as I said before, we've got learning set up and we've got some feedback here. So feedback from on the learning resources is available here. So we can search for um, uh, uh, feedback from from any 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 any, um, uh, any learning. We can see the rating. We can have a look at the feedback and uh, and respond accordingly. So that's the nature of feedback. So this is it's a virtuous circle. So we get that feedback. We go back to our learning resources and we edit the learning resources. The final element of the, of the system I'd like to show you is the uh, administrator. So if we quickly go to the super administrator, again, we can see a, se a separate interface, which is uh, attuned to that learning type. So um, here we'll have a, a dashboard. These are, these are custom dashboards you can create. But if we go to the administer learning, here we've got the ability to add learners, programs, uh, assign users to managers, manage bookings, etc. If we wanted to have a look at the reporting in the system, um, we can go on to review. And here we can have a look at the reporting. So we've got we can report on the programs or the individual learning resources themselves. Um, if we go to view learning resources, um, we can see uh, a, da uh, a default report. So let's have a look at the yeah, instance learning performance. We can filter for anyone that hasn't attempted it, for instance. And we can see the learning that hasn't been attempted between those two between the, in that work window. We can then print, email, um, or, or export the information. So for instance, say if we wanted to have, have a look at anyone that hadn't um, started their learning, we can send an email and say, uh, please start learning. Um, and then we can give a message and we can send that report to selected managers um, if we wanted to as well. Um, and we can say we want it repeated weekly on a Monday and then we can send that off. And what that will do is um, send this message to anyone who hasn't um, attempted the training and it will push them through the system. So you can use this email functionality for doing, doing tasks such as that. Um, other elements of it, we've got report to Power BI. So what this does is, um, if I uh, just show you an example. OK, so with, with report to Power BI, we can um, visualize the data in many different ways. And it gives you good meta analysis of the data to see overall trends. And you can query the data. And it has an AI summary of um, the data with any, with any um, uh, uh, information about that. And you can export that information to PDF if you wanted to as well. Any of these reports, um, you can um, create your own as well. Okay, so if we have a look at a, a custom resource, um, let's say learning type. Um, here we've got, if we just edit it, um, we can see that there's um, a filter. So these filters appear at the top of the, the top of the screen and allow you to filter the data accordingly. So here we can select a filter, and if we want to filter for male and female, etc. Um, and we've got the report fields as well. So if you wanted to put a, another report field, you can select that. Um, length of employment. Um, and you can have report visibility. So with this, you can change, select exactly which departments, groups, employees have access to this report within your, within your control. You can then save and close that. And what that will do is then it will um, uh, add this extra filter. So you can filter for male, female, etc in this report um, and so basically it shows you just the, the, the data for people um, who are the, the women in the report as opposed to the men. So um, you can use these again for emailing, printing uh, and downloading the information um, to, uh, to people. Finally uh, within the system we have, uh, it's highly configurable, um, we have uh, within the defaults of the system we've got um, around 250 different configuration tasks, which you can change the system with. We have um, within the organization, um, we have um, many different roles. So if we wanted to set up these roles, um, just to show you, we've got um, a limitless number of roles and you can customize these roles with any number of permissions. So essentially, um, the system will behave exactly as you want it to be it configuring the, making changes to the configuration options, which can do things like change the look and feel, change the functionality, or the permissions uh, as well. 
that's Open Elms. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick tour. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know and we can show you more.